What up everybody, Instructor Beef, back again here with another Multiplying Decimals lesson. Today we're going to be multiplying decimals by cross shading. So let's get started and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to find the product of two decimals by using my cross shading technique. But before we do that, we need to rewind back to our multiplication skills. So we're going to be multiplying, so we need to understand what multiplication is, right? And we know that multiplication is repeated addition. Now, when multiplication is repeated addition, we know that this time sign says groups of. So really what 4 times 8 is saying is 4 groups of 8, okay? And if you were to draw that, with a uh, tape diagram or what I like to call a part whole model, um, you would kind of, you would draw this out, right? There we go, perfect. And you would have four groups, and then each group would have eight in there, right? And obviously four times eight is 32, but this is what it would look like, right? So that's gonna be important to know as we continue throughout this lesson. Let's take a look at what multiplication can mean with a fraction. All right, so here we have three fourths times eight. Now in this instance, multiplication is always repeated addition, right? Um, it could also be multiplication comparison, but it is repeated addition. So in this case, so when we have a fraction, if you remember, this multiplication sign is going to say of. So really we have three fourths of eight. Now if we were to show that with a tape diagram, right? Of course I would draw my group of eight right here. Okay, I'd do a part whole model. All right, I have eight total. My denominator tells me four equal groups. So I'm gonna split this into four equal groups. And of course, I want three of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade in three of those four equal groups. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, please check out our fraction of a set lesson. And so if I split this eight into the four equal groups, obviously that would be two in each group. And then if I wanted three of those, three fourths times eight or three fourths of eight, would equal six, right? So I kind of started by uh, splitting my eight into the four equal groups because my denominator told me four, and then I shaded in three of those, and three of those equal groups gave me six. But now, what if both of those were fractions? What if I wanted three tenths of five tenths? Well, the first thing I'd have to do is I have to split my area model into five tenths, okay? So here are my 10 equal groups, I already have them, and I know that I want five of those equal groups. So I'm going to go ahead and shade in five of those, one, two, three, four, five, there we go, and I'm going to shade in the whole thing. All right, so there's my five tenths, right? But now I want three tenths of those five tenths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into 10 equal groups, I'm going to do my best to do equal, okay? But if I'm going to split these five pieces into 10, I'm going to go ahead and split all of them into 10, all right? And again, these are supposed to be equal, I'm going to do my best. Probably not going to get it correct, right? Because I'm not perfect. But I'm going to split these into 10 equal groups. Come back in a second. All right, there we go. There's my 10 equal groups. So real quick, I forgot to label this. Here's my 5 tenths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now I, I went ahead and split. If I'm doing 3 tenths here, okay, on the side, I went ahead and split this into 10 equal groups going um, horizontal. And I wanted 3 of those pieces. So 1, 2, 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to diagonally shade all three of those in. Now, really I only want to shade into here, but if I'm gonna do one tenth, I need to do the whole tenth, right? So then here's my second tenth right there, and here is my third tenth right there. And if I started with five tenths, and then I shaded in three tenths of those five tenths, any of these pieces that were shaded in twice will be my numerator, so one, two, three, four, five, 10, 15, there we go. And I now have, because I split it 10 this way and 10 that way, I now have a hundred total pieces. So three tenths of five tenths equaled 15 hundredths. So this is what it looks like when you're finding a fraction of another fraction, right? You split up 10 equal pieces that way, you shade in your five, the second factor, and then I wanted three tenths of those. Well, guess what? Decimals and fractions are the exact same thing. So if I can write three tenths in decimal form, or I could write it in fraction form. This is the same thing, right? So decimals and fractions are a different way to write the same value. So I want three tenths of, this multiplication sign can mean of, four tenths, right? And so what I wanna do first is I wanna take my second factor, four tenths, 
and I want to split up my area model into 10 equal groups because that's my denominator. And I wanted four of those 10 pieces shaded, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and shade in four of those 10 pieces. Okay, and then you just wanna double check, right? You had one, two, three, four equal pieces. And then that's what I'm starting with. I'm starting with four tenths, right? But I wanna know what is three tenths of those four tenths. So I need to now take my area model and I need to split my four tenths into 10 equal groups, okay? Now, again, if you're gonna split four of those pieces into 10, you're just gonna go ahead and split the whole area model into 10 equal pieces, okay? So come back in a second. And it's supposed to be equal, but you can see I went a little crazy there, okay? And so now I want three of those tenths shaded in. So now I'm going to shade it in with a diagonal line. All right, there we go. And I could shade just right here, but if I'm gonna shade one of these tenths all the way in, I'm just gonna go ahead and shade all the way down. Okay, some people don't do that, but I like to do that because I know fractions are equal groups. And so if I'm gonna shade in one of my, one part of my group, I wanna shade in the rest of that equal group as well. So that's two tenths, and then here is my three tenths right there. And so to find my product, all I'm doing is trying to figure out, okay, which of these parts were shaded in with the highlighter in the diagonal line. If I had four tenths and then I eat three tenths of that, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then my whole denominator now is a hundred. So if I wanted to write it as a fraction, it would be 12 hundredths. If I wanted to write it as a decimal, you could write it in decimal form as well. So that's what I do. Let's take a look at the steps that I did and write them down in our notes. So our steps for multiplying decimals by cross shading, the first one, Draw your area model and lightly shade in to represent the second factor. Okay, we always start by shading the second factor because that multiplication sign means of. So we're gonna be finding the fraction of or the decimal of that second factor. Number two, write the first factor on the side and shade in the value of the first factor using diagonal lines. Step number three, you're going to count the parts that were shaded in and have diagonal lines too. And then number four, Check to make sure your answer is reasonable. So I forgot to do that in the last I do. Let's make sure we do that for the we do problem. Because anytime we're multiplying decimals, we should always have an estimate first. All right, so for our we do, we wanna know what is three tenths of one in seven tenths. So quickly, I'm gonna estimate this. I know three tenths is about zero. I know one tenth is about two. So zero times two should be about zero. My answer is going to be somewhere around zero, all right? Now, here I actually have two area models put together. So here is one hole from here to here, okay? That'd be one hole. And then from that point, this point would be my second hole. So my steps are, I wanna go ahead and shade in my second factor, okay? Because I wanna know what is three tenths of one and seven tenths. So I need to start with that one and seven tenths first. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that, and you could write it in decimal form or in uh, fraction form. I'm gonna go ahead and write it in decimal form this time. And I know I wanted one hole, okay, which means I'm gonna be shading this complete hole in here, and then seven more tenths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you lightly shade it in. You can do it with a highlighter, or you can do it just with a pencil. Just make sure you shade in nice and light. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you don't have to shade in every little single spot, but you do wanna make sure you shade in the right amount of tenths, okay? So here I have one hole, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now. I wanna know what is three tenths of that one and seven tenths. I need to go ahead and write down my three tenths over here, all right? And then I need to go ahead and uh, split horizontally my entire area model into 10 equal groups. Again, that's because my denominator is 10. Even if you wrote it like this as in decimal form, your denominator would still be 10. That's why you call it three tenths. So I'm gonna go ahead and sh um, break this apart. All right, and again, not perfectly equal, but we all, are doing our best. So now I want to shade in three tenths of those, right? So my numerator is three, so one, two, three. And again, now I'm gonna do this with a diagonal line, okay? And I'm gonna shade all the way down. And some people put an X in here, it doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna shade in three tenths horizontally now, okay? And again, what you're doing when you get down with that is you're counting all the spots that have been lightly shaded in and shaded with a diagonal as well. So I'm not counting these white spots over here just with the red diagonal. I'm not counting these spots that have just been shaded in. I wanna know what is three tenths of one and seven tenths. I'm only counting the spots that were shaded in twice. 
So here I have 10 in this row, so 10, 20, 30, and then I have 31 right here, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. And it is 51 hundredths, okay, because my denominator is 100. I know there's 200 here total, but the denominator tells you how much each whole is split into, which is 100. So my answer is 0 in 51 hundredths, or you could write that as 51 hundredths as a fraction. So now I just want to make sure my answer is reasonable, right? I want to make sure my decimal is in the right place if you did the previous lesson with us. And I know my answer was about zero. And if my decimal is right here, that gives me a whole number of zero, which is pretty reasonable, right? My answer should be less than one if it's close to zero. So this is a reasonable answer. Let's go ahead and try a you try problem. All right, so if you're new with us here at Instructed Beats, what you can do is you're going to go ahead and you're going to pause the video in a second. You're going to estimate it and write your estimate so you can check if your answer is reasonable. You're going to go ahead and try to solve this one by yourself and then push play to check your work, to check your mastery. Okay, if you are not ready to try one yet by yourself, that's okay. You can do this as another we do with us in your notes, which you can find on the uh, link in the description of this video. So if you're ready, go ahead and push pause and solve this one by yourself. All right, so my estimate, I know 6 tenths is about 1, 4 tenths is about 0, so I know 1 times 0 should give me eh, somewhere about 0. 0 is my estimate. So again, I'm going to start with my second factor first, okay, so I'm going to start with 4 tenths, and so I'm going to shade in 1, 2, 3, 4 out of these 10, all right, and then I want to know what was 6 tenths of that 4 tenths. So again, I need to split this into 10 equal groups, and I'm going to uh, shade with the diagonal line six of them and for this one if you notice I didn't shade in my whole tenth I know I told you to do that But I do want to show you this because sometimes if you see a question like this They're not going to have the whole tenth shaded in they're only going to shade in the pieces that were shaded in Already all right, so that's just one way that you might see it So I want to show it to you so now all we do is we count up the pieces that were shaded in and have a diagonal line So six tenths of four tenths would be one two three four so 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24 hundredths, which means my decimal needs to be right there. Or you could write 24 hundredths in fraction form. And if you look, that is pretty close to zero. So my answer is reasonable. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We know there's lots of different options. We know this video is a little bit long, but this is an important skill because it's going to help you when you get to fractions and have to cross shade fractions. Again, thank you so much. We'd love you to hit subscribe, follow us on all our social media accounts. We appreciate you. Instruct Beats, out.